Okay, so here we are on the ES Play Micro, and this was sent over to me by MakerFab. And if we flip this over, uh, we can actually see that they've got a little branding right there. Um, so they, I, I reached out to them. I actually saw a, a video about this uh, by a buddy of mine named Davey. He's got a YouTube channel and uh, a Twitter account that I follow, and he did a video on this, and I knew I wanted to get my hands on one. So I reached out to Maker Fabs, and uh, they were generous enough to send this over to me. So I want to thank them for that. Um, but if we take a quick look around, we've got, you know, up, down, left, right. We've got our D-pad over here. We'll start and select. Uh, we've got our A and B and a menu button over here as well. Uh, if we look at the bottom, uh, starting at the left here, uh, we've got a micro SD slot, a micro USB, on off switch, um, some other kind of uh, port there. I honestly don't know what that is. Uh, it looks like it's a, a power port of some variety. Uh, and then over here, we've got a mic, or a, a, headphone jack. So this doesn't have any speakers built into it. So if you want sound, you will have to use that headphone jack. I can't say that the sound uh, does come through just fine, no issues whatsoever. Uh, and then if we look at the top, uh, we've got uh, our left and right shoulder buttons. And then we've got this little teeny tiny uh, 320 by 240 uh, resolution screen here on the front. Uh, if we flip it over to the back, uh, you can see right here in the middle, we've got our uh, ESP32 uh, chip here that everything is powered on. Uh, over on the left, we've got kind of an expansion port here. And that pretty much wraps up everything back here, except we do have a, a battery port uh, that I've got a, a 500 milliamp hour battery plugged into. I, I scavenged this from something else. Uh, it doesn't come with that. So I did add that myself. And this does have a charging um, module in it. So once you've got this plugged in, uh, it will, or charging regulator rather, uh, it will charge the battery and it will um, even go so far as to light up a little LED right here, letting you know that it is charging. Uh, by default, it's got some Nintendo games on there. I've added a few more since then. Uh, it comes with a few of those. Uh, it's got an MP3 built, player built in, uh, Game Boy, Game Boy Color, Mega System. Um, while it technically supports Mega System, it's not great. Um, you know, if we go ahead and we go in here and just take a look at uh, Mortal Kombat, for instance, you'll know that when I'm reviewing these uh, emulator systems, I like to look at Mortal Kombat games uh, just because, um, you know, they're the kind of fast paced uh, games that will tell us if a game is running uh, smoothly and quickly and up to speed. So we'll go ahead and take a quick look at that. And I will say these buttons do have a nice tactile uh, bump to them. When you when you press the buttons, you can hear them click. And I really do dig that. Um, but I can also say that you can see that these are uh, very small little buttons here. And after a while of pressing them with your thumbs, your th thumbs will get sore. Um, so I'm hoping to eventually get a 3D printed case to put on this. So while we're here, what I'll do is I'll go ahead and just select my character. Uh, we'll go ahead and use Scorpion on easy there. There it goes. And you can see even getting between those screens is pretty slow. Um, and that's just because this unfortunately doesn't it's, it's just some of these games don't do well uh, on here. And it's unfortunate, but we are dealing with an ESP32 chip uh, to power all of this. Um, so you can play it. It's just, it's not a great uh, experience here. So let's get out of here. Uh, let's click on exit. Let's go back to our main screen here. Um, like I said, it's got an audio player built into it. Uh, originally, there was uh, a separate firmware that had the MP3 player built in, but they have uh, kind of merged those two into one uh, firmware. So I dig that. Uh, ColecoVision, nothing in there. Uh, Game Gear, same thing. Uh, Master System, we just looked at. Game Boy Color, let's take a look uh, at some Legend of Zelda here. So this is loading just fine, looks good. Uh, obviously, uh, no, no perceivable lag or anything. Uh, that I can tell, but again, uh, this was on a fairly low powered system by today's standards. So that uh, ESP32 chip shouldn't have any problem running this at all. Um, but I don't really wanna deal with the story right now. So let's get out of here. Uh, we'll click exit. Um, tell you what, let's go, uh, let's go look at uh, some Super Mario Brothers. And again, this is on the uh, classic um, NES. So um, no SNES on this. Unfortunately, uh, that one's just a little too hard to power, which means, of course, uh, PSP and um, and uh, PSX games are going to be a little bit too much uh, for this to run as well. well maybe it's not going to run this either. Tell you 
but let's uh let's exit that. Let's try a bit of a different game here. I was playing this one earlier, so it should be just fine. Uh, it could just be a bad copy of my ROM that I've got for uh, Super Mario Brothers 3 there. But let's take a look at two. Uh, like I said, I have played this on here quite a bit. Um, and there's no lag or uh, or anything. Wow, that was really bad timing there. But like you can see, this one runs just fine. So if you're a, if you're a big fan of the uh, original uh, Nintendo, the Nintendo Classic games, um, this is a great little handheld uh, to to take those games uh, with you while you're on the go. Oops. Oops. So I mentioned that uh, the firmware on here is open source. If I haven't, I should have. And uh, I believe it's all written in Python, so you can uh, download the original uh, firmware code from GitHub. I'll link that in the description as well. And you can then create your own custom firmwares. Uh, Davey actually does a good explanation on that on his video, so I'm not gonna go into too much here. But if you want to uh, flash a custom firmware on here, what you'll do, press and hold down the menu, and then flick the little switch on the bottom over here to on. We'll give this just uh, a couple of seconds to turn on. And then once we get this screen, we can let go of the menu button. So I've got a couple of different versions on here. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and select this one and I'll press A. Um, and then uh, it wants me to confirm that that's what I wanna do. So I'm gonna press uh, start. And we'll give this just a couple of minutes. It's gonna have to go through this writing process a, a couple of times uh, in order to get everything written properly. So we'll give this just a second to finish up. Okay, and there we go. We've got our new firmware flashed on there. It actually saved all of the games that are already on here. Uh, so that's really good stuff. Okay guys, there is the ES Play Micro. And again, I wanna give a big shout out to Maker Fabs for sending this over to me and let, letting me take a look at it and share it with you guys. Also, thanks to Davey for uh, posting his original video where I found this. Uh, I really do appreciate everybody that was involved in this. Uh, it's been kind of cool to check this out. Uh, it's the first time I've looked at a retro gaming uh, product like this that's actually a handheld. I think I've got another one of those coming in the mail uh, from Banggood, but um, I, I still gotta wait to see what's going on with that. So if you're interested in retro gaming, uh, whether it's uh, emulators or hardware or whatever, do me a favor, hit the subscribe button. I do plan on releasing more of this kind of content in the uh, coming up, uh, upcoming times. So uh, with all that being said, uh, I can hear my wife over here playing the Outer, or outer Worlds game. I'm gonna go do the same thing. Uh, it's killing me that she's playing and I'm not. So all that being said, I'm going to go ahead and wrap this up. As always, thanks for your time. I always appreciate your support and I'll talk to you in the next video.